Welcome to the Tradies in Business podcast with your hosts, Warwick Bidwell and Nicole Cox. Divert your phone and grab a brew as Waz and Nick unpack tips, tales, secrets and stuff-ups from guests both inside and outside your trade, helping educate and inspire you to break the cycle of gut-busting and money stress and create a true trade business. Good morning, Monday morning. Good morning, Monday morning. <sighs> how are here. you, Monday morning? <laughs> We're back. Does anybody Happy... ever ask the days how they are? I Happy think that's Monday. a bit rude that we don't say, and how are you this morning, Monday? Do you think Monday would ever answer? Well, it depends on your state of mind, one would think. <laughs> <laughs> there was a fair bit of silence when we just said it, so <laughs> perhaps not. Oh, I could hear something going on upstairs. Yeah, it definitely wasn't my brain. <laughs> Not this morning. I've just been dribbling crap this morning. You're very excited this morning. You are bouncing off the walls. How many coffees have you had? Uh, I'm only on to my pretty standard number three for the morning. Well, you have a lot of coffee, so three isn't a big deal. No. Or you want a new I... blend, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's something in the coffee. Something's <laughs> going on. It's sunny in Tasmania. It is actually. We've mm. had some beautiful days. You um, have had some cool stuff. Actually, I took a photo of mine this morning. It was only four degrees here in Ipswich. Wow. Felt like 2.5 apparently. I can tell you in my Queenslander bedroom, it most certainly did. <laughs> well, it was four degrees here as well uh, and it's still only nine degrees. Oh, let me tell you what it, it takes is. takes a while to warm Do you up. want to know what it is here or should I not uh, tell you? No, you can tell me. I don't mind. I'm it's inside. The fire's going and everything here. 16.9. <laughs> That's funny. It's no longer cold. That's funny. No, it doesn't stay cold for very long up there. No, it doesn't. And that's the best part of the day. The only trouble we really have, my house would be a lot warmer if it wasn't 110 years old, but it'd also be a lot warmer if I could get the warm air from outside into the house. It's it's hard to pull that air in. Mm. I need one of those card affairs. Have you ever experienced a card affair? Oh. It's like <laughs> a big extractor fan for your house that sucks. So you can use them in summer or winter and it sucks the air from outside in. So in summer we had one at the previous house in Wyvernhoe and it was too big. The ceilings were too high. It was just too big to air condition. It wouldn't have been economical. So we had the Carter Fair, and at the end of the long day, it would suck all the hot air out of the house. Um, oh, and right. you could do the same in winter. You could bring the warm air into the house. You'd only mm. leave it on for a minute or two. But, yeah, they're excellent. Yeah, they wouldn't work in Tassie because uh, in winter there's no warm air outside. No, it's just cold and cold <laughs> and cold. It's just cold. I'll be cold interested to see what summer's daytime. like. The um the other seasons down here, so the other three months of the year, are fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we've had some wonderful days, bright sunshine. It's gorgeous weather down here, actually. I uh, I maybe we'll talk about stories we tell ourselves, Coxie, and and that can be my little mini Chuck Norris into my attitude and the odor of my attitude in the last few weeks. <laughs> The fluctuating like odour. <laughs> uh, but my lovely wifey has told herself and others this incredible story for many years that she is a land-based mammal, as she likes to joke about. Mm -hmm. um, and she claims that she's not a big fan of the water. She doesn't like the beach. Uh, she just likes, she likes the hills and the mountains and the countryside and all that sort of stuff, which is fair enough. Mm -hmm. But um, we discovered, well, wifey discovered water skiing on the dam last year with some great friends of ours. Oh, that's right. Yes. Mm. Mm. And um, water skiing and tobogganing and jet skiing and and she absolutely loved it. And we now live down here in beautiful Tassie. We're in the Tamar Valley. So we're only like about a 15-minute walk from the Tamar River, which is just one of the most gorgeous rivers I've ever seen. And... Um, Wifey has now worked out that she's not, in fact, necessarily a land-based mammal because she loves the water. She loves being by the water, still loves the mountains and the country and all that stuff, and we've kind of got the best of both worlds here. But it's just interesting the stories we tell ourselves and we sort of come to believe that stuff. This could get very deep. Ooh, a bit deep for a Monday, Coxie. It's, and it's a public holiday here in Queensland, so this could be very yeah, deep. Mayday, mayday. Oh, no, not, not that mayday. 
Should we talk about the unions? <laughs> that was my attempt at a dad joke and it just flew straight on by. That it's one actually crashed into the hillside. May the, the fourth, fourth be, with, be you. with you. Oh, my gosh. I can't believe you didn't I'm, pick up on that. I'm so glad I haven't heard any of those jokes today. But this could get very, very deep, right, because I think you're <laughs> incredibly correct. We tell ourselves some pretty interesting stories at times. But, yes, go on. Tell us your interesting story. <laughs> I was hoping you were going to drop yourself in <laughs> sticky mud this morning, Coxie. Well, you but, led me to it, but then you you Chuck Norris, mm, and now we're talking mm, about your sort of story. sidestepped and walked away. We did. But they, there can be some incredibly shit stories that we, the royal we, tell ourselves about all sorts of things, whether it's uh, whether, how good we are as a parent or bad. Uh you know, what we think we might achieve in business or not, um, our interests, how we feel about the Rona. Guess what, listeners? We're in this the middle of this thing called COVID-19, the global pandemic. Still. Yeah. Have you noticed? Still. It's still going on. I think people are really bored with it, actually. If the reception in Queensland over the weekend is anything to go by, yes, I think they're incredibly bored with it. Is that is that evidenced by the fact that people were bustling to get through IKEA as quickly as possible? <sighs> yes. <laughs> so we we uh, it was an interesting experience. I'm goading you, Coxie. I'm you goading are, you. you. You're dropping me in. You know I'm going to go off like a top again. Is this a story that you tell yourself about IKEA? <laughs> It's a story that I tell myself about myself. I am not yet fit for human consumption. I cannot yet stand to be around people. They piss me off. They get in the way. I guess we just better put that E in front of this one. They get, they're just, I had a big problem with people at Ikea yesterday when I went, I went for one thing, which is daft to begin with. Nobody ever goes to Ikea for one thing. The truth no. is I bought two things, so I did pretty well. But oh, we just wanted good. to get in and out. We, we weren't there for much of a browse. We needed this item yesterday. Otherwise, we would have just click and collected like we did previously. However, mm-hmm. we really needed it for yesterday. Uh, so we took a trip to Ikea. We got there at 10 o'clock, so we thought we were nice and early. Turns out we weren't. There was a very big, long line. <laughs> and I was fine with the line because to me that appeared as though they were limiting the amount of people in store, which I thought was fantastic. It meant that I could have the swift experience that I required get in, get said item and move along Um, because we're meant to be shopping with purpose. We're not meant to be browsing. We can shop for non-essentials, but we're meant to be shopping with purpose. Well. (laughs) I find that hilarious, hey? It is fucking hilarious. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so this is now an explicit episode. Thanks for that. I'll just go pop a note in the spreadsheet (laughs) so that when I publish it. I get it right. <laughs> it, it is. It, it was an absolute crock of shit. I've never, they weren't limiting the amount of people in the store. It was all under pretense. It was busier than it was on a normal day. I'm a pretty regular IKEA shopper. Um, it's, it was busier than a normal <laughs> You're a day. You're a seasoned IKEA shopper. I am a seasoned shopper. I like it. How often do you have to go to IKEA in a year to be classed a seasoned IKEA shopper? Just a couple of times, I would say. More than once. <laughs> More than once would be enough. I'm, I'm like a once in 20 year kind of a guy. Oh, really? I like Shit, looking yeah. at the displays when things are good and it helps me stay on top of what's going on in particular kitchen and wardrobe storage options. <sighs> oh, sorry. That's Just part of what I do. What were you saying, Cooksy? <laughs> right. So you want me to get back fired up again. Get, get, so, me, back, get me back to the interesting <laughs> bit. <laughs> there were far too many people in the store and nobody was interested in social distancing it's to the point that fortunately the items that we bought were 60 centimetres either side. So the builder and I are walking around with our sticks out on either side of us to keep people away from us because they were being so rude. And it was that or I was going to go to the knife section and find a knife and start stabbing people. I was so pissed off. But nobody, nobody was obeying the social distancing rules. And there were some older people in there and people were just bustling past them. And I mean, proper brushing past them, touching them as they went past. I was just so incredibly cranky so we had to leave and to make matters even more exciting when we got home the item didn't work right so you were feeling awesome by the end of this whole thing i was feeling really great and pleased (laughs) that i had this experience and 
incredibly proud to be able to say I am not yet ready for human consumption and I will stay in my house and continue to be alone. Well, I I have to say I it's it's probably easier for me. Easier? Oh, jeez. Um <laughs> you know how we say, "Oh, it's easy for you." Yeah. That that just sort of brought up a whole nother thread of philosophy. Oh, absolutely. That I <laughs> but um, down here in good old Taswija, uh, we're still under all the same restrictions. Um, probably some of the tightest in the country, I think, still. And because of the big outbreak in the northwest, that's going to continue for a little while yet. There's rumours about mid-May, perhaps some of this being relaxed down here, but... Uh, See, I'm I'm not a fan of humans. Our <laughs> listeners might be surprised to hear that, <laughs> because uh, and and this is the thing, right? We talk about stories. Um, we see aspects of people online, and we think we know people. Mm. And that's not to say that Coxie and I are fake as fuck and just making stuff up online. Because we would never you know, do that. <laughs> but but what you see, listeners, and hear from us is is us, and I I feel like that's one of our core values. Coxie is being authentic and definitely and uh, real. Um, and we talk about our own stuff, and you know I've shared some some funky shit about me over the the years of the podcast, and you and I dig pretty deep into all sorts of issues, Coxie. Mm. Um, sometimes I wonder if that was a good idea or not, but <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we seem to get largely positive feedback. Uh, but the, the restrictions down here, I don't mind it because no. when I go to a shop now, like took a uh, miss eight and a half year old, um, with myself and wifey into the city on Saturday because... She needs some more clothes uh, due to the complexities of the way her (laughs) parents' life is structured. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't always find my daughter turns up at my house with what I would consider to be appropriate clothing. Oh, my God. I could really get going on this tangent. (laughs) Um, And I have a thing about my kid wearing clothes with holes in them that are threadbare. And so we, uh, we took her shopping with us. Um, to a fairly large, uh, they do like, you know, adventure gear and, oh, fuck it. We went to Anaconda, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and it was awesome because there's hardly anybody in the store. You're not allowed anywhere near anybody else. They've got barricades everywhere and, you know, there's only like 15 people allowed in a store the size of the MCG. And so I could actually just like, Shop with purpose, of course. I, I that blew my head back. My head, my hair back. Um, it's like browsing is not permitted. Big yeah. sign at the front. Browsing is not permitted. You must be here for essential items and shopping with purpose. I'm like, but I don't know what the fuck I'm going to buy. So I have to browse to get the jacket for my kid. Like, do you have to walk in with the item code written down? Go, <laughs> oh, I want this one. No, I think uh, that there are these. Um, this group of the population certain part of the population who browse professionally, which is code for they just go into shops and look at shit for no real reason. They're not interested in buying anything. They're all at Ikea on Sunday. (laughs) Pissing Coxie off. (laughs) I'm not a shopper on a good day, but I get the whole no browse because I I certainly Mm. understand what you're saying, but they're essentially saying no time wasters. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, no, I'm going to calm down a bit. (laughs) (laughs) So... I um, But see, here's another story, right? I say I'm not a big fan of humans, but mm. I really like chatting to people and um, Mrs. Woz went for a ride on her horse with uh, a new horsey friend from up the road and we had a, a quick chat in the in the gateway um, as they were going out because you can't gather in groups of more than two people here. So um, I was observing my social distancing protocols. But it was nice to have a yarn. Mm. So I like that. I like chatting to you. I like chatting with our listeners mm. online. But I just I'm like I'm probably a bit like you, Coxie. I can't stand those kind of gatherings of general public. Yeah. Uh, close to me. <laughs> I like people 
Um, and I get on pretty well with them. I don't bite too many of them, but uh, it's the it's the large gatherings in public places. It just shits me. It seems to be a particular type of public place I do not like people in. <laughs> like your shop where you're trying to get something. Just shops full stop. If you can't – look, I <laughs> – <laughs> the and I have decided we either need one of those big red hands that are on the Coles ads so we can poke everybody in the head or a paddle prod before get we go shopping. Get out of my one and a half metres, dickhead. The fuck out of my way. Let me do what I've got to do. I just want to get in, done, over. Don't come near me. Don't talk to me. Don't look at me. But like you, it would be easy for me to assume that I don't like people, but that's not true at all. I just don't like people in shops. <laughs> They get in your way. They, they stop you do. from they achieving do. your goal of grabbing your one or two IKEA items. I just don't three. want them to sneeze on me or touch me or, or mm. even look at me sometimes. <laughs> but they just, yeah, I don't know. What happened to being polite, taking a turn? Everyone was fine in the line, although the whole system of the line was pretty ridiculous because you might be 1.5 metres away from someone in front of you, but what about the people in the other line right next to you? I know. That are 30 centimetres away. Yep. That's Doesn't sound like they're doing a very good job in the store of managing that stuff. Well, they wouldn't. And I think it came down to there just being too many people in the store because it's not like it was just in certain sections. It was everywhere. And everywhere you went in the store was congested. And even if you went off, you know, I for those who've never been to Ikea, there's a path. You have to follow the path to get out the store. It's like a rabbit warren. Um but the seasoned shoppers like myself know the shortcuts. But even the shortcuts were full of people. You could not get away from the people. It was, I feel as though stores like Coles and Woolworths and Target and Kmart are working really hard to keep the numbers the in the shop down. Ikea was not. And that's what created the problem. So I, I worry a little perhaps that because that's not, really being monitored or policed. Agree. Uh, particularly up there in Queensland. That could potentially send the numbers the wrong way. Yeah. And then we're all going to suffer because a bunch of knobs couldn't wait to get their flat pack furniture. Are you calling me a knob? Well, I just realised as that came out of my mouth <laughs> that I tarred you with the same brush. <laughs> You really did. <laughs> there were more knobs, though. Well, for us it was <laughs> – there's a second part to the story that isn't ours, but it was on TV, and I guess if you don't live in Queensland, you might not have seen it. But yesterday afternoon uh, there were literally hundreds and hundreds of people sitting on the um, Burley Beach or Burley Hill or whatever it's called to watch the sunset. But, of course, because there are so many people, each of those groups of people individually were doing the right thing. They were only with people from their own household. You can't go out and meet somebody out. Um, you can have two people come to your house. But these, So these people were essentially, according to the police, all doing the right thing. But the problem was there were so many of them, they were no longer social distancing from the other mm. groups of people around them. Mm. It was just so full. So that's got to create some issue with the virus being spread again. It really does. So therefore I feel, and this is probably very easy for you and I to be saying because we quite like being at home on our own away from people. Mm. I feel as though the restrictions are being lifted too quickly. I'm not sure that it's going to have the result that they would like. That said, I was very public about the fact I didn't, I thought the elections were ridiculous here in Queensland and it didn't seem to impact the numbers at all. Um, so I, I don't know, I worry like you do. Mm. What's going to happen now that we're starting to loosen the restrictions? Are we going to go straight back into a longer period of lockdown? Is it going to get worse before it gets better? That's what bothers me. And mm. and um oh, look, they've got a they've got to draw a line in the sand somewhere. This is turning into a bloody corona episode. Um well, that is the daily tradie corona podcast thing. <laughs> <laughs> the daily tradie corona cast. Called. <laughs> uh yeah. I, I, yeah, they have to draw a line in the sand somewhere and say, look, this number is what we're going to base our decisions on. Because, mm. like anything, even in, in our businesses, we have to use a metric. There's got to be some measurement that says, no, that's it. I'm laying off two workers. Or, yep, it's time to employ someone. Or, mm. no, I'm not taking that job on because it doesn't meet my target margin. 
like we use all these metrics to make decisions and the government has to do the same. I mean, they're not immune from any of that. No. So they're not just going to go, oh, I don't know, I feel pretty good about the Rona, let's lift the restrictions. Like they, They've got to base it on some decisional process. Yes. And it sounds like they're probably going to use app sign-up numbers mm. as a as a metric. <laughs> Are you trying to get me all fired up this morning before no, you let me go? No, I wouldn't do that. Coxie, not on your day <laughs> off. <laughs> you'll, you'll be going straight to that new bar of yours like, fuck you, Was, and now I need three drinks. <laughs> now that would be a story I would tell myself. Look at you go, <laughs> yeah. Chuck Norris. We're just like chucking in and out. We are. Um, we're chucking a segue. So... <laughs> But uh, I don't know. Yeah, relaxing the restrictions, that's what bothers me. It's like, yeah, great. So the government says, well, now you can all congregate in Ikea and at Burley Heads and uh, and then, oh, whoops, more cases. Well, we're all fucked now. We're going to have to go back to tighter restrictions for longer. And then the pollies don't pay the price. We do. Yeah, that's but their true. decision. And that's kind of what shits me. But it also... Oh, so were the fuzz there um, making people go home? <laughs> they <laughs> worked like in the worked end. that one in? You did. We were laughing about that prior to the podcast uh, or recording. Um, they did in the end. I feel they probably left it too late, but I don't know. It's a bit catch-22. What If they're legally doing what they're allowed to do, who do you see <laughs> go home to? There's a there's a rabbit hole, Coxie. Isn't it? But who legally do you say doing going- what we're allowed to, but. Lots of us do that and still get in trouble with the fuzz or oh, the true. tax office or whatever. That's true. It reminds me of the Pennywise song about authority. If you don't know it, go Google Pennywise authority and you'll find a really cool song. <laughs> I like Pennywise. I went to see Pennywise once. Not that Did long you really? Ago. You're yeah. a headbanger. Look, I've had my moments. Did Another you like do environment the whole I don't like thing? people in? No, <laughs> yeah. God, no. Uh, okay. I nearly no, got no. into a punch up at a. Bernard Fanning concert of all places. <laughs> Funny that you say that. I did too. Really? Yep. It was Some, probably you. No, no it wasn't you. The guy was <laughs> enormous, but he was pushing me and breathing on me and I was getting crankier and crankier. <laughs> uh, <laughs> There's a stop theme breathing going near here. me. <laughs> I was not in a mosh pit. There was no need uh, for him awesome. to be quite that close. Anyway, he got told and then got cranky, but he eventually moved away. So it was all right. Yeah, I similar thing. I had this dickhead come in late and I think I've shared this story before, but I'm going to bloody well tell it again. <laughs> uh, my beautiful wife surprised me with tickets to Bernard Fanning at the Tivoli in Brisbane, actually. I love the Tivoli. Because I'd never been to the Tiv and see, did you see how I did that? It made me sound all local and shit. But you should have said you miss so and you would have been bang on brand. Well, I was getting there. So <clears throat> I was a little younger then, actually, like two years. So, uh, <laughs> but it was a few years ago. She took me to the Tivoli to go see Bernard Fanning, one of my all time favorite artists. And we got there early. Uh, and because it was a standing concert at the Tivoli, which pretty much they all are, um, be. we got there early, stood. Like we were three, four rows from the stage. It was epic. But Mm. we stood in the middle of the massive ground floor area for fucking ages to keep our spots. And, uh, and of course, the place filled up and people were all drinking. And so the gig started and it was about two or three songs in. And this six-foot fuckwit comes in half cut and starts muscling into my space. And he's literally just leaning on me like leaning on my shoulder with his armpit. Oh, nice and, guy. And I'm I'm uh, in a heightened state of <laughs> vigilance as it is <laughs> because I'm crammed into a venue with 5,000 other sweaty humans, which is not my cup of tea. No. Uh, but I make some allowances in life for certain things. And so Numb Nuts is now leaning all over me and trying to muscle me out of what he has decided is his spot on the floor. So here's me, like all five foot seven and a bit, sort of leaning back against this big (laughs) pissed guy and we're literally having this like silent shoving contest whilst Bernard's (laughs) cranking out the tunes and I'm getting angrier and angrier (laughs) because like 
come on, dude. I stood here for fucking two hours to get this spot mm. and you've walked in late, muscled through the crowd, picked on the little guy and decided you're just going to fucking shove me out of the way. So <laughs> I gave him a bit of a push with my shoulder and probably a bad idea. Probably. And so he's, he's arced up and started with the whole, what the fuck's the matter with you, mate? You want to go, do you? Do you want to go? <laughs> and I'm like, mate, I don't want to go. I was, I've been here for ages. You've come in late, like yelling at him because the music's playing loudly. Uh, so can you just fucking stand over there and stop leaning on me? Oh, I fucking was here first, mate. You know, this is my spot. You're fucking trying to push me out of the way. You want to go? Let's go outside, mate. You want to go? And Amy's there. Like Amy's six foot one, my wife. <laughs> she's taller than this dude. <laughs> And she's like whispered to me, don't worry about it. Just, you know, let's just move over here. I'm like, no, fuck this. We stood here for ages. Anyway, so old mate's getting a, getting pretty wound up. <clears throat> One of his friends steps in and saves me from getting my face turned into a smash pizza. <laughs> <Custard. laughs> yeah. And uh, calms the farm. Anyway, old mate is, is pretty drunk by this point. And he wanders off. <laughs> he wanders off to the loo and he doesn't reappear. Hurrah. And I'm thinking, oh, he must have given up and gone home. Look how good I am. I scared the big guy off, right? <laughs> anyway, I overhear in intermission, I overhear his friends saying, where's so-and-so? And someone says, oh, he's fucking passed out in the toilet. And I'm like, yes, you oh, missed God. the whole gig, you prick. But that's, I don't know what that story's got to do with anything, but it's a story oh, I've been telling myself. <laughs> I can tell you a story about Powder Finger gigs. We, um, I used to work with one of the fathers of the members of the band. So we would go, uh, well, all of the earlier concerts, I used to follow them before they were Powder Finger. Not that I can recall what they were called. They used to yeah. play at Her Majesty's Tavern downstairs oh, in, yeah. the mall, in the Queen Street Mall. Anyway, long story short, eventually uh, a particular pharmacist was put with in my store because they knew what a big fan I was, which was very kind of my employers at that point. And he was the father of one of the band members. And um, towards the end we would go to concerts with them, which was really cool because you'd have a nice area to stand in with no six-foot giants getting in your way. <laughs> and you could share the concert civilly and enjoy your time and the drinks with it. It was awesome. And oh, at the Tivoli particularly because you're upstairs, it was very cool. Uh -huh. Um and then they managed um, my other, my very favourite band ever for a period of time, uh, the Greats. So we could go to those oh, concerts yes. with them as well. That was really cool. That's my claim to fame. <sighs> so humans, hey? <laughs> well, this what an interesting. Really went weird, didn't it? Sorry, oh, Pete. Oh, we bounced around all over the place, gang. Monday, we're a bit disorganised. Had a great toolbox meeting this morning. Not because you weren't there, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> sure, it helped. Thank you for doing that. I appreciated my lie-in. I didn't lie-in. I just sat around in my jammies yeah. for an extra half an hour. <laughs> so did I. It was nice. Uh, I just happened to do it online with a whole bunch of people <laughs> at the trade desk. But um, we did talk about, uh, I guess, not bouncing around like you and I do on the podcast in yes. your toolbox meetings. And, uh, and I shared some tips with our trade desk members about just how to run better team meetings and how to make sure they – they are a positive thing in your business. Um, and I managed to draw a really cool parallel between toolbox meetings and brushing your teeth. Oh, can you share? Uh, yeah, if you join the trade desk, you go. Oh, oh I like it. Sneaky. <laughs> Sneaky. Now I'm going to have to go and sit through the whole damn thing. Uh, <laughs> but we do actually record the sessions. Um, it stays on the Facebook page, I hope, now that I've said that. They do. Uh, <laughs> But the cool thing is you can join for free at the moment, gang. Free, Still, free, free. Coxie and I, uh, we have very deep pockets <laughs> and very short arms. No, that's not true. <clears throat> um, we are continuing to let you join the Trade Desk, our, uh, our super awesome subscription membership thingamajig. I don't know what it, we should call it. Is it a subscription? Is it a membership? Is it a product? Is it a paid I don't group? Know. It's a bit of all of those. Is it a cult? Let's call it a cult. Yes, come and join our cult. Come and join our tradie cult. Can't we register it as a religion? <laughs> <laughs> we'll get Tom Cruise to come and help us with that. I'm sure he would. You love Tom Cruise. Mm. Uh, 
<laughs> so uh, you can join for free because of the Rona. We reckon that now more than ever, you could use a bit of a hand and maybe hang out with some other people who are learning and feeling their way around and complaining about stinky humans. And uh, <laughs> we want you to get in there and give it a go for nothing. nothing. Can I tell the people what, what's coming up in the trade desk, if you remember? Yeah. That'd we be do. a good idea because they're thinking, well, what, what the fuck it? is a trade desk? And that's great that it's free, but why would I join something for free when I don't even know why it's any good? Well, we've told the peeps plenty of times that there's bunches and bunches of how-to videos, templates, DIY, uh, DIY flowcharts, scripts, the whole bunch. Everything's in there that you'd need to improve your trade business. But what we haven't told you just yet about May is we have – some super exciting coaching calls on Wednesday afternoon. So we do, it's a coaching program, right? It's a DIY coaching program. And just about every day of the week, Warwick and I are in the group teaching you something, catching up for a drink, catching up for a coffee, doing a toolbox talk to get your head right. But Wednesday afternoons we do a web class and we have some really cool web classes coming up this month. We're talking all things tradies and cash flow on Wednesday, which I'm sure makes you initially think, oh, boring, I roll. But you know what? You need to know that stuff <laughs> right now more than ever. You need to be in control of your cash flow. The following week will be a coaching call. So it'll be half an hour of Warwick and I coaching you through an aspect of your business and generally that relies on the Trade Desk members and the questions they've been asking. And we're able to delve into one of those answers, sometimes a couple. The following Wednesday, we're doing another web class on social media for business, trade businesses, which social media you should be using. Should you be using House or Pinterest or Instagram or Facebook or TikTok or oh 500 gosh. other TikTok things? TikTok does my head in. Oh, it's very <laughs> anyway, cool. Sorry, I refuse to download it. I had to delete it. it. No, I had to delete the app. It was just not- too intrusive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not surprised. Oh, uh, no. And then the following, so Wednesday the 27th, we're having another guest join us. Steph Campanella is going to join us and take us through what you need to get people converting off your homepage, which is really cool. Mm. For those of you that have a website or don't have a website, that information is absolutely gold. So we have a bunch of very informative stuff coming up this month. I'm actually really excited about our um web classes this month not that i wasn't last month or the month before but this month particularly, <laughs> the other ones were shit they the weren't are gonna be really good <laughs> they weren't. last week's coaching call went off it's the biggest coaching yeah, call yeah. we've had yeah so that was great you have to join us we have all sorts of fun we don't dribble like this we we get to the point pretty quickly <laughs> sometimes sometimes <laughs> uh yeah so the um um um, um home page thing that you mentioned with steph the webinar yes. that, that she's running uh, there's way too many people that are getting told by their SEO or website people. It's like, oh, you're getting all these visits, you're getting all these, all these, uh, you know, impressions. Yes. Fa- fancy name for people Going window shopping. Site. Here's mm. a Chuck, a Chucky segue. Look at it. Uh, is all these people just professionally browsing <laughs> your website I and like not it. buying anything? So Steph's uh, Steph is. <laughs> I was going to say, well, I'm about to say what I was going to say, which means I'm about to say it. So then I'll have said it. <laughs> St- Steph uh, from Tradies Get Online is the tits when it comes to this stuff, your online Jeez. presence, and yes. actually turning professional browsers into people who spend money, damn it. I like it. Yeah. Look at you segueing so, the shit out of that. So, <laughs> so jump on that webinar. And look, if you use the coupon code tradies for tradies four is the number four in between the two words, tradies, and tradies is spelled T-R-A-D-I-E-S. Do you know how many times I have to spell tradie for numbnuts at banks and phone companies? It's a little frustrating, it's isn't it? tradies in business. Do you live in Australia? Well, oh, no, you probably don't. There's anyway, your answer. So- <laughs> So, uh, what was I saying? Yes, coupon code, Trade Desk, Tradies for Tradies. Stick in the coupon code, free month of membership. You get two kick-ass webinars. Job done. Job done. You'll be all over your cash flow. You will know which social media you should be putting time into and you will know how to get people converting on your website. Three webinars. Holy shit. For the grand total of zero. Zero. (laughs) Nada. But better still. Should we talk about this, Coxie? This is like. Hundreds of bucks worth of gear for Nick's. 
It is hundreds of dollars worth of gear. And you get us for 30 minutes on a Monday morning. <laughs> that's that's the cost. The you cost is you listen to us. Stuff. You get, uh, what do you get? Tuesday you get coffee an hour of coffee. Nicole. Coffee. Coxie. You get us for an hour on a Wednesday. You don't get us on Thursday. No. Nah, we're having a day off. I'm not doing Thursdays. And then Fridays, we have drinks. And they actually got <laughs> lots of fun this week. We had to call it early because they were getting far too loose mm. and there were kids around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did remove my daughter from the session. Because <laughs> uh, we have a particular character from uh, very close to the New South Wales border who <laughs> I'm pretty sure he turns up pretty well half full. <laughs> I think it's his first business. drink. He just he's a bit quick witted and likes to pay out on everyone. Let's it go. He loves he, he loves the Kiwis. He loves our Kiwi cousins. He does. <laughs> so anyway, you could that's... have all of that. You could be with us just about every day of the work week. How about yeah. that? How is that not the best way to spend a week? <laughs> I'm sold, Coxie. Yeah. Do we have Ask any reviews to read out? <laughs> uh, no. Oh, oh come like on, people. Bastards. Come Tom on. was there. Tom was at drinks last week. Tom left yes. us a review. I'm so, I'm pretty pleased that Tom actually continues to work with us after what I said. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we've had a few reviews. So uh, Melly T and Sam Haywood and Tom Fraunfelder have all given us reviews. If you'd like to get your name on the list, it's probably why no one's giving reviews because I yes. bloody name everybody. Um, but thanks, legends. All five stars. All reckon it's awesome. This podcast, give us a review. We'll track down the person who stole our money and didn't give us our merchandise <laughs> and um, we'll send you some. We will. We will get some eventually. And if not, we've got my old pencils. <laughs> <laughs> give us a review and you'll go in the running for a my old pencil. No, actually, we've got three months. Trade desk. Oh, yes. That's what we were going to do. I forgot Here's about another that. prize. Well, another yes. reward because we're going to select. Uh, we'll have to come up with two now. The, the best one, I don't know how we're defining that, probably our usual rubbery weird standards, yes. the best one gets some merchandise and the uh, something or other, other one, the second thing we're giving away is three months Trade Desk membership worth 150 bucks. thanks to one of our members who wants to sponsor someone into the Trade Desk. That's pretty cool, isn't it? When people see that much value, they want to give it away to somebody else. I had to double check that proud. that was like they wanted to actually pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, a um, couple of cool things there. If you give us a review, all you have to do is go to iTunes, write a review for the Tradies in Business podcast. We'll love you forever. We and will. I'm going to stop talking shit because this has gone on for a long time, Coxie. Well, have we figured out how Monday is yet, though? Monday's awesome. I like Monday. Sun- Sun's out. I'm alive. I'm alive. It must be good. No my guns. Four, my four cattle haven't um, broken through the fences and run away. Oh, you fixed your fence. Yes. I put another electric wire up. <laughs> <laughs> this will get you. Yeah. Well, they they know that it's nasty, so they stay away from it. Fair enough. I would too. <sighs> okay. I'm going to go drink more coffee. Thank you for listening. Sorry mm. that it went on for quite so long. Thanks for if you've listened this far today, um, I I really admire you. Me too. This <laughs> because this shit. bounced around more than a ball in a pinball machine. <sighs> Have a great Monday. Bye. And we'll talk to you again soon. You've been listening to the Tradies in Business podcast with Warwick Bidwell and Nicole Cox. Find out more about today's guest, tools for your trade business and other cool stuff at tradiesandbusiness.com.au.